Well, welcome to Coffee Talk. We're so glad that you joined us. Uh, we're taking some time to sit down with Aaron today and just talk a little bit more about his message on Sunday. Um, he spoke out of Matthew 8. Mm -hmm. And really, the uh, thrust of the message was that Jesus does have power over the demonic world. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think you had three main points, if I remember correctly. <laughs> uh, the first one is that the enemy is real, yeah. that, that Satan is real. He's not just a cartoon figure. Yep. Um, that he has a purpose mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's to devour and to destroy. Mm -hmm. And that Jesus has power yeah. over him in the demonic world. And so you know, I just have a few questions that maybe we could talk about a little bit. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah so the first one is, um, do you believe that a Christian can uh, be possessed by a demon? Yeah, I think that's one of the, kind of the big questions we have in the whole demonic world, you know, because that's what we want to know. Um, in scripture, it's, it's hard to be absolutely emphatic, but as emphatic as I can be, the answer is no. Like there's, there's so many things when you, you look at scripture, one, there isn't a single See, you know, entity in scripture where a believer is possessed by, by a demon or anything of the like. They are um, uh, oppressed, they are influenced, but there is, there is no, um, no example of that happening anywhere in the New Testament. And the, probably the verse that's uh, the most poignant in that is 1 John 4, 4, where it says that you little children have overcome the world. God's overcome the world, so therefore you've overcome the world. And it goes on to say that greater is he that is in you than in he that is in the world. And if you are a true child of God, and I think that's where that big if comes in, if you are a true child of God, then you have the Holy Spirit living in you and light and dark cannot coexist. We see that in scripture as well. And so I think it's really clear from scripture that that while the demonic world, demonic world has the ability to do a lot of things in our life, he can't possess mm -hmm. us like he would possess someone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit living in them. And I think that just a really, it's a great truth. It's great comforting to us as a believer. But mm -hmm. what I don't want it to look like is I don't want it to look like, whew, therefore Satan can't do anything to me. Right. Because he can. Right. He just can't, it can't look like what we read in Matthew 8 where, you know, the thousands of, of demons are inside that person making him live a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a, it's a pr pretty great question and a good discussion, yeah. Right, I, I hear that often. You know, that, yeah. that, that's a question and a good reminder for me too is that that's one of the, the tools that Satan uses is fear. Yeah. And so if he can make us afraid that, that we can be consumed by him or taken over by him, um, it, 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 it can paralyze us. Yeah. And so um, just to be wise and asking the Father to help us be wise, maybe we're being influenced um, yeah. but not be afraid of possession. So I appreciate yeah. that. So, yeah. But what happens if we do feel that we're being influenced mm. um, by the demonic world? You, um, there's a, we live in a sinful, fallen world. So there's a lot of, of things coming at us and um, we can feel oppressed. What should we do? Yeah. You know, scripture is pretty clear on, on what that looks like. You know, 1 Peter 5, 9 says that we are to resist him. Mm -hmm. And you hear a lot about, you know, offensive warfare, defensive warfare, and, you know, the first point, there's an enemy, we are at war. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that, that we are at war, but it is, it's God who is that offensive partner in our warfare, right? So it is our job to resist. How do we do that? Well, we resist by living in faith. And um, I was reading something uh, today that would kind of... Um, kind of stood out to me and it was this idea of having a pre-commitment to obeying God's word. Mm -hmm. No matter what God's word says, I am choosing in my heart right now today that I'm going to obey that no matter what he tells me. And I kind of love that, particularly in regard to this idea of, of being influenced by Satan in a demonic world. And, you know, we talked about the schemes of Satan and, and what he's doing in our life. If we are firm in our faith, which means we are active in our belief and trust that Jesus is real and that his promises are true. If we are, if we are active in our faith, that is, that's what resisting looks like. It doesn't mean that we just stand there and not move. You know, it's, yeah. it's an active resistance. We are actively obeying Jesus. When we fail to obey, and we all do that, so mm -hmm. there's grace and there's love in, in those moments. Mm -hmm. But when we fail to obey, those are the moments what, when we are most vulnerable, mm -hmm. those are the moments that we are not resisting because we are welcoming in 
lies, we were welcoming an untruth because we're not living in the truth. So that uh, that verse, you know, First Peter five nine, it's such a it's such a strong one. Resist him as you stand in faith, and it's a very active resisting. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's not just one thing we do, right? It's right. it's totality of living, <laughs> as in most things are. Right. I. I... As you're talking, I'm thinking the word prepared, be prepared is coming to my mind. You know, how can I be prepared? Instead of walking around in fear and on eggshells waiting for Satan to come after me, can I just be prepared? Yeah. And that reminds me of the putting on the armor of God. Yep. And just something that seems small is, you know, when I wake up in the morning, if I can turn my thoughts to God in some way, just a simple prayer where I'm acknowledging, not just that Satan's real, but that God's real, the Holy Spirit is real, and saying, thank you for this day, and I'm depending on you today, Lord, so whatever you have for me, I'm yep. yours and yeah. I'll follow you. And, and those are some small steps that we can take that are intentionally preparing us to meet the enemy face on, yeah. no matter when he comes our way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned that um, the devil has schemes and some of his schemes are deception, mm -hmm. uh, temptation and accusation. Yeah. Um, so can you describe maybe a little uh, how those might show up in our lives? Mm. Yeah. Um, I think something that comes to my brain when I was thinking about this is that that passage where um, it's Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4 tells us that don't don't allow Satan to get a foothold in your life. Mm -hmm. He's talking about anger. He's talking about not going to bed, you know, in anger, particularly talking about um, relationships with one another. But it's that word, don't allow Satan to get a foothold in your life. And I think when we look at the schemes of Satan, and it's one of the things we talked about in the message on Sunday is that that unfortunately we are unaware of his schemes. You know, we are unaware of what he's actually doing, but as he's deceiving us, you know, as he's tempting us, as he's accusing us before the Father, we allow him to, to get footholds in our life by, well, living out his truth, mm -hmm. right? So if, if anger, as Apostle Paul says, is, is a way that, that Satan gets a foothold in my life, when, when I'm angry, when I'm refusing to forgive or I'm refusing to let go, that foothold is just, it's the smallest of openings that Satan uses to come in. And again, not to possess us, because we talked about that as a believer, but to come into our world of influence, to come past our standing firm, to come past that armor of God that we put on and to influence our very life to well, begin thinking that maybe God isn't real or thinking that his promises aren't true. Right. And, and then the temptation comes to, well, to not obey and to follow Satan. And then the accusation that comes, oh, I, I fell. And so I, I must be a terrible person, you know, I'm this rotten to the core person. And yes, we are. But as a, as a believer in Jesus Christ, Father Christ, no, we're not. We're, we're his righteousness. Right. So right. I think those, those little things that we do that maybe not seem like a whole lot, you know, you're, mm -hmm. Your spouse does something you're ticked off at, so you don't deal with that. You don't forgive. You don't. You don't remedy that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just that smallest of openings for for Satan to come in and, and begin to trip us up by his multiple schemes in our life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think you know this whole idea of claiming his truths and believing his truths. It's like the best thing I can do is to know God mm -hmm. and know His Word to know His truth. Because then when something's thrown at me, I can, the Holy Spirit can remind me of those things. And then the question is, do I believe God or do I believe the yeah. enemy? Yeah. And the more I can um, just get to know him more about who God is and his character, uh, then when I'm pressed, I can remember who my father is. Yeah. And, and he's a king and he's a, he's a loving father and all of his characteristics. And I can say, no, this, this can't be true because I know that's not who he is. Yeah. And then I can claim that truth and, and not let Satan get a foothold. Absolutely. So God's word is just such a powerful, powerful tool in yes. our lives. So. Yeah. And if we don't know it, like you said, <laughs> we don't have anything to compare the lie to. Right, right. Yeah, we have to know yeah. it. Well, thanks so much, Aaron. These are always good. good, always fun to do with you. Yeah. So, And thanks for taking the time and watching uh, and joining us. If you have a question of your own, put it down in the comments of the video and we'll get back with you. We'd, we'd love to chat about it. So thank you. Have a great week and God bless you. <laughs>